Thanks for joining me for another Tax Syndicate instructional video. In this episode, we're going to cover how to install Media MTX Video Server on a Linux machine and use it to share video from the ATAC UAS tool. Media MTX is a free video server application and is available for a variety of operating systems and deployments, like in Docker containers and on Windows machines. For this video, I will be deploying on a Linux machine running Rocky 8. The instructional I will be using is located on the taxindicate.org website. Look for our new Media MTX video server page shown here. Okay, let's get after it. The first thing we want to do is get over to the Media MTX GitHub site. I've got the link right here. This is where all the particulars are located about this program. Let's scroll down to the installation section. We're interested in the standalone binary. Click on this hyperlink. Next, let's open this hyperlink in a new tab so where we can download their operating system. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to download the Media MTX version 1.8.5 Linux AMD64 tar file. This is going to download onto your computer. From there, we're going to extract it. Now let's go to the finder. All right, you can see we have this file here. I've started a media MTX folder right here. So I want to bring it in there first. That's just a way to keep things organized. Now that I've got it in here, I need to extract it. I'm going to use Archive Utility. Use whatever you'd like. You can see I've got the Media MTX YAML file, the .yml, and the Media MTX installer. Now let's get back to the Tax Syndicate and scroll down and look at the scripts we're going to need. Now we need to download the Media MTX Create SystemD Service Firewall script. You'll notice some other scripts in here that are set up for Let's Encrypt. That is a project that's coming down the line. So let's go over here and open this in a new tab. I want to download this file. Now let's go back to Finder. Go back to my downloads. I'm going to drag this into the Media MTX folder for safekeeping. At this point, we are going to want to be able to keep open a browser window and open terminal at the same time so we can copy and paste the code off the Tax Syndicate website. All right, so I've got this size correctly, and now I want to open up terminal. Now I'm going to log into the Linux machine. All right, I'm logged into the Linux machine, and now we're going to create a username MediaMTX. Next, we're going to set the password. We're going to set the password as MediaMTX. It's going to give you some hassle there saying that the password is in the username. That's okay. We can put it in twice. And then you'll get um, this message here that uh, all authentication tokens were updated successfully. All right. Now let's make MediaMTX a sudoer. Now we're going to switch to the MediaMTX user. All right, now it's time to install Media MTX. We need to transfer those files off your computer onto the server. I'm going to use FileZilla for that. 
All right, I've got files that look queued up here. I'm already in the media MTX folder. I'm gonna hit refresh, and now you can see the files that I put in there are available. I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna to go to the home folder and open up the media MTX folder. And I'm just going to drag the firewall file over, and then I'm gonna drag the YAML and the installer over. All right, everything's moved over. Can minimize FileZilla. Next, let's change directories. And now we want to queue up for the media MTX installation. It's going to ask for a password. Now we're going to execute. All right, that's it. It is installed. This is what the output should look like. Now, you, the service is running. To get out of it, we want to hit Control C. And now we're back at uh, the command line interface. The next thing is we want to create a service to start on boot and configure the firewall. We have a script already set up for that. That's the one you downloaded and moved over. So we're going to copy text here. And it didn't ask me for the password if you need it. You can copy it here. And now we're going to execute the script. All right, now let's check the firewall. And it looks like this. All right, at this point, the server is installed, but we want to go in and make some changes to the YAML file. And to do that, we need a text editor, and I like to use Nano. So we're gonna install Nano. All right, hit yes. And you can see that it is installed and complete. All right, so now we're gonna go into and, and set some security preferences um, out of the box. Right now, um, we've set the firewall up, but anybody that had your IP address and port number could just start sending video to it and Media MTX will start um, rebroadcasting it. So we're going to add a username and password to the requirements of the stream for RTSP to make sure nobody can do that. So the next thing we want to do is change our directory and we want to hit this um, code here, sudo nano media mtx yaml file so we can go ahead and edit it. All right, now we have um, the YAML file open, and I'm just gonna scroll down here, and I will maximize this a little bit so it's easier for everybody to see and follow along. And we wanna go to this right here, this auth method internal. And right now it's set to any user. We're going to add a user And we'll call it tech users. And then we're going to go down for password. And we're going to put syndicate in. Notice the space between the colon. You, that has to be there. All right. Now that that is done, the only other thing we're going to do is make sure that we exit out of this appropriately. And I have that up here. You want to use write out, which is Control-O. So 
you can see it right here, right out. We're going to hit Control. And then we want to hit Enter to um, agree that we're writing it to this file. And now we're going to hit Control X to exit. And we're out of there. All right. So now if we want to get back to um, the service, we can hit this journal control here. And now you can see that the file was changed and it's been uh, reloaded. All right. And sometimes it may ask you for the password. I have this again. All right, we're going to hit control C to exit out. And we're going to restart the service just to make sure all of um, the changes were made and saved. And then we'll go back in to the service. And there it is running. So now your server is set up to stream from ATAC clients through the UIS tool and the TAC ICU plugin using RTSP. You can use the IP address of your server, or if you set up an A record for your DNS, you can use a domain name. So the next thing we're going to do is switch over to a view of the UIS tool and getting this all set up. All right, now we got the DGI controller hooked up, and we're going to launch ATAC. And we're going to go into the UAS tool settings. So I'm going to hit UAS tool. And then I'm going to go down and hit settings. Anytime you have a tool open in ATAC and you hit settings, it will open up the settings for that tool. What we're interested in looking at is the video broadcast preferences. And broadcast size, I'm going to do a 1280 by 720. We've got pretty good network here. The bit rate I'm going to put at 900 and we're looking at the video broadcast destination RTSP push and the IP address. Now look down here you can see I have an IP address of 63.250.55.72 so we'll start there and I'll show you how to do it with an A record off uh, if you have a, a DNS setup. So I'm going to add new endpoint and so we'll type in that 63.250.55.72. I'm going to hit confirm. We want to click on it and up the observer URL. And I'll show you what that's all about. And then the port. The port we're using for RTSP on here is 8554. I've right, got the port, update the URL. All right, next thing I'm going to do is click on usernames. TAC users is already set in here. You saw that on the video when we set it up. Hit OK. Then the password, it saves the last one, but we'll make sure it was syndicate. Hit OK. We want to make sure that this TCP connection is set. And at the very bottom, if you ever wanted to send someone to look at this video, let's say from like VLC, this is the address it's at. All right, now I'm going to show you how to set this up using a fully qualified domain name. So instead of using the 63.250.55.72, I'm going to send it to videofeeds.tactical.net. So you're going to have to do that A record wherever your, your DNS is hosted at. You can do it there um, and then go back in here and change it. So go to Video Broadcast Preferences, Video Destination IP Address, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this endpoint. I'm going to add a new endpoint, and that is video feeds. 
uh, tactical uh, net. And hit confirm. Next, you want to click on this and update that observer URL. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can see it made this change. Now, you could use this or that other IP address. This is just a good habit to go inside and uh, check this out, make sure it's correct, and, and um, hit OK. Now let's move on. Next thing we're going to do, I scroll back. We're going to launch the UAS. We're going to expand here. We're going to hit the wrench. So we get these toolbar on the left. Upper left is the video broadcast. And now it's broadcast has started. And you can see at the very bottom here that a session is happening. It's publishing. That it's giving the name of the UAS and it's got one track. Meaning there's no audio. It's just video. And it's MPEG TS. All right. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take another view of showing this uh, broadcasting. All right, now we have the UAS up in the air, and that, that's the controller on the left, and on the right is uh, a client, an ATAC client. And I was to click on the client on the UAS, I get the option to hit the play button. And now you can see that I'm broadcasting and the client on the right is picking it up. And let's check out the latency as I scroll um, around. I'll go left, a little less than a second. And as I pan down. So that's, uh, that's it in a nutshell. You can see that this is pretty easy to set up, that you've got pretty good uh, broadcast uh, quality, very low latency. And then if you're ever wondering about what's going on in the server, I would, I would do something like this, where you can open up Media MTX in Terminal, and you can see what's being broadcast and, and then how many connections are, are, are reading um, from the path. One of the things I want to cover is what resources you need for the Media MTX server. That's kind of hard to nail down. I have this running on a two core Intel Silver in the cloud on SSD nodes with eight gigabytes of RAM. And I plan to just have like two UASs up in the air at a time streaming and maybe up to 20 people viewing. And that's pretty good for that. Um, but I would dig into that more if you've got a big program and you expect a lot of people viewing the stream you really need to start thinking about what sort of resources you need. So I hope this was helpful. And remember, tech is the way.